There's only peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, which is God's love in His presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen. Would you turn your swords, please, and go to Mark 16. Mark 16. In Mark 16 and verse 9. Is everybody there? Now when Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, it says that he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She, she went out and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had, had seen him and after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes or follows me and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not follow me will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who follow me. That's what the word believe means. In my name. Everyone say in my name. In, my name. in the name of Jesus. They will what? They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. These were promises of God Almighty. After people who had followed him got into a place and got baptized in the Holy Spirit with fire and power, and said that these signs would follow them. And in this, the first thing he says, demons. Demon is a disembodied spirit that needs a body to survive. And he's, he doesn't care whether you're a Christian or not. These are descendants, offsprings of Nephilims, fallen angels that took on women and produced offsprings. And their offsprings became Nephilims. And when those Nephilims were destroyed by the Lord in the flood, they became demons, disembodied spirits. So they're looking for a body because they used to have one. And they are evil and wicked. And they are carriers of a poison. It's pretty amazing where he talks about this. He says, now look it. Okay, so he says, they'll cast out demons, which are carriers of poison. They carry a venom. And they will speak with new tongues. In other words, God will give you a new language which you heard speaking. It's called the heavenly language. You speak directly to God. It's the only language the serpent, the devil, does not interpret. He can't understand when you pray in tongues. Other than that, he's going to interrupt any one of your prayers if you don't know how to battle. It says, then they will take up serpents. Serpents. Now, I want to tell you about a serpent. <laughs> serpents you know it's amazing how in the Old Testament and more speaks of serpents today's modernness we talk of snakes they've watered it down let me tell you when I had my visitation from the Lord and the glory of God came upon me and I was brought to the other side when I realized that I was changing and I was being freed up. My dog began to bark viciously. 
Because my dog was with me with the visit, when I had the visitation from the Lord. And I was hearing this rattling sound. And when I looked, it was this large, snake-like serpent. And it was hissing and trying to bite my dog. And I looked at the Lord and said, what do I do? And the next thing I, that came out of my mouth, well, I turned to the serpent, and I, my hand went towards it and said, from the love of God, I curse you, Satan. And this thing curled up and moved away from my dog. And of course, I said to the Lord, man, this stuff only happens in Star Trek. And he said, no, guy, that came out of you. And I never used drugs again. I never had the desire to drink, smoke, fornicate, lie, or cheat. Never had that desire again. Never. In the Old Testament, again, they talk about serpents. That's why he said they will pick up serpents. And these serpents are actually spirits that are carrying a poison. There is spiritual poison that's happening right now, and people don't even know that they're getting contaminated or being destroyed from it. Poison. Poison doesn't help you, does it? No. The venom in these serpents, the purpose of that, now he was saying, take up these serpents. Now, there are physical serpents and there are spiritual serpents. They're creatures that carry a deadly poison or a venom. Again, the Old Testament <clears throat> chooses to show the expression in the area of serpent of the main serpent. Lucifer, who was the fallen angel, became a serpent. He lost his beauty. He became a serpent. Of course, now they call them snakes. But there's vipers. A viper has two fangs. It's hooked. And when that opens that viper opens his mouth poison comes out of its fangs it's amazing how they're promoting vampires these days what do they do they bite supposedly bite the neck and draw blood what are they doing they're drawing the life out of someone these serpents are still alive today though you don't see them they are carriers of a poison they are also known as demons or disembodied spirits because many times these spirits will go into animals. Is everybody okay? They release a paralyzing venom. They follow their prey until it dies and then they eat them. That's what a, a serpent does. And then it says here that um, we will, even if we Drink anything deadly. Drink anything deadly. Well, drinking something deadly means partake, partake in something that can kill you. Poison. Amen? Does everybody see this? And it's uh, what it, can that do? Can it bring sickness? Yes. Yeah. Can it bring disease? Yes. These are all poisons. He said, though, that we will lay hands on them and they will recover. They will recover. Why? Because he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Only the blood of Jesus is the antidote from being bit by a serpent. Only the blood of Jesus. Does everybody understand that? In Genesis chapter 3. Spiritual poison. <clears throat> you know, when you see poison... There's a label in the world that says skull and crossbones. It's amazing how many people wear clothes that have a skull and crossbone on them. Or skulls. And, and then call themselves Christians when they're promoting death. Does everybody get it? Amen. In Genesis 3 and verse 1. Would you read it with me, please? Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, God has indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, 
nor shall you touch it, lest you what? Die. Why? Because it was poison. It was a poisonous tree. It was a poisonous serpent. The serpent that was in the garden was poisonous. Then the serpent said to the woman, you're not going to die. What did he do? He lied to her. For God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, they were created in the image and likeness of God. They didn't need to partake of anything. They were already in there. The problem was is they did not know who they truly were. And that's, again, I want to express again that that's one of the ploys of the enemy is to get you before you know who you really are. Because a true identity, when you know him and you have relationship with him, you'll know who you are. But without relationship, you're not going to know who you are. And the enemy comes to steal your identity. Why? Because then you lose your authority. And you try to fight physically and not spiritually. The serpent, which we call now, is an unseen father of all poison. It's deception, lies, lust, and sin. He convinced Eve to partake. <laughs> Actually, he convinced her to put herself first. Does everybody get that? He convinced her to do what? Put herself first. Can everybody hear me? I got a lot of dumb looks at me. Uh -huh. Is everybody all right? Okay. Everybody hears me. Amen. Good. Praise God. <laughs> I guess maybe I need to go around the room today and lay hands on everyone. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So he convinced Eve to partake. And when she partook, she became contaminated and poisoned. And that poison continues down now. It's changed DNA, it's changed everything. It's spiritual poisoning. And many people don't even realize that they're partaking of this spiritual poison and it's affecting them. Go to John chapter 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 42. So understand that these unseen evil spirits carry a poison. In verse 42, would you read it with me? And Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he, sp he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my what? To my word. You are of your father, the devil, the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God, hears God's words. Therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. Unbelief and doubt is poison. Unbelief and doubt is a poison to your soul. Now your soul is made of your mind, your will, your emotions, and your imaginations. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tighten up. Praise God. Unbelief and doubt is what? Poison to your soul. How many of y'all want to drink some poison today? <laughs> You'd have to be an idiot if you wanted to. But many people are drinking it, partaking in it, touching it. Poison comes in multiple forms, doesn't it? 
Let me give you a definition of poison. Poison is a substance with an inherent property that tends to destroy life. That's its purpose. And the other thing it does is it impair health, but it must be absorbed into the system. It must be somehow absorbed into the system. I'll say it again. It is a substance with inherent property that tends to destroy life and impairs health when absorbed into the system. Again, the origin of spiritual poison is Satan. He is the origin of it. He is the originator. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He destroys life. He impairs. He brings sickness. He brings death. And the one thing he wants to do is prevent you from eternal life. And Acts chapter 8. Hallelujah. In verse 22. 8.22. Let's speak it together. Repent, therefore, of your wickedness and pray, God, perhaps that thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by what? Bitterness and bound by what? Iniquity. Poisoned by what? Bitterness. How about unforgiveness? How about jealousy and rage and hatred? Remember, sin is the presence of of a spirit. These spirits carry poison. In the Old Testament, the Lord allowed serpents to bite the individuals. He sent them. Also, they manifested. And they bit the individuals that were rebellious towards the Lord. And 3,000 fell. Why? Because they were bit. One day, uh, the Lord sent me to the hospital to pray for this woman. And you might have heard this testimony on some of the teachings. And this woman was dying. And this other woman had come up to her. It was supposedly a friend of hers. And she had this cane, but she had stuff wrapped around the cane. And I could tell that she was a witch. And every time that she touched this woman that was in the hospital bed, she touched her to try and comfort her. The woman in the hospital bed would go, oh. And I was standing at the end of this bed. And I was watching this happen. And I wanted to slap this woman's arm and say, don't touch her again. And the Lord told me to fold my arms and watch. And I folded my arms and I watched. And the next thing when he said watch, in other words, what he's saying is pay attention, look through the physical, into the spirit. That woman turned into a cup. And out of the cup were heads of serpents. And every time she went to go bend down and touch this woman, one bit her. And the woman would go, oh! And he said, my temple, my children are filled with the Holy Spirit. Those that are not filled with the Spirit are filled with serpents. And he said, this woman is a temple of serpents. And so every time she would touch this woman, she would groan. And I thought, whoa. And what a revelation. Again, my revelation, first of all, was my encounter with the Lord where there was a serpent that came out of me. Evil, unclean. The word talks about unclean. The Lord warned Adam and Eve, don't touch anything that's unclean. Don't participate. Don't agree with it here. People are poisoning themselves by the things that they watch, the things that they listen to, the things that they touch, the things they speak, things that they've inherited. They've inherited per- curses which are associated with poison. People are walking around unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred. It's all a poison. And James chapter 1. This poison is real, 
And people that are, people carry these spirits, so they become poison. They are carriers of poison. And James chapter 1. In verse 12, would you read it with me? James 1, 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does it say? Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is what? Drawn away by his desires or enticed. In other words, the enemy is going to draw you away. He's going to try to entice you by what? His voice. His voice is going to try to entice you. It says when the desire, when desire in verse 15 has conceived, it brings forth, it brings birth to what? Sin. In other words, it's now become poison. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. But the sin is a spirit. It's the presence of evil that carries the poison. It's a venom. Does everybody get it? So in this, the enemy will try to entice you. He tries to provoke you. He tries to challenge you. To do what? To cooperate with sin, which is the presence of evil. If you cooperate with the presence of evil, that means you've agreed with it. You do what we call a transgression because you've done the act, and now you have partaken of this poison. And this poison will stay in you until it is removed. There's a difference between cleansing and removal. You may be cleansed, but you must remove the spirit, or that constant spirit will keep poisoning you. Has everybody got it? That's why addiction is nothing but a demon. In fact, addiction is an overwhelming desire. Amen? Amen. So that means it's lust. Oh, an overwhelming desire is lust. So when there's an arena where the enemy is enticing you, he's provoking you, he's giving you a desire that's not of God. So any, any desire that's not of God is of the enemy. Amen. I mean, it's real simple. That's how you determine it. You don't try to justify it. You don't try to reason with it. You expose it and say no to it and depart from evil. But if you're not filled with the Spirit of God, you're not going to get it. You won't have the discernment and understanding. You won't be able to see things through. You'll only be able to see things physically, not spiritually. See, when you are filled with the Spirit of God, you see things through the physical into the Spirit. Why? You'll know what's provoking that's called discerning of spirits. You'll know what's provoking you. You'll sense it coming before it even attacks you. You'll know it's coming. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord tells you things to come and guides you to all truth. So when you're truly filled with the Spirit of God, you know things that are coming. I know, listen, I, the Lord has told me, one day he said to me, Guy, you're going to be afflicted. And people say, well, God's not going to afflict you. I didn't say God afflicted me. He told me I was going to be afflicted. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, nothing, I'm going to heal you. I said, okay. Man, I woke up 2 o'clock in the morning. I was paralyzed. I was afflicted. I was trying to crawl on my hands and knees. I, was, I had a temperature of I don't know how much. My wife probably remembers some of it. In fact, the next morning she went out and went to morning prayer and started interceding for, for me and kept saying, you're going to the hospital. And I kept saying, no, the Lord said he'd heal me. I had brothers in Christ come over and pray over me and cast out on any spirits that they thought were in me and whatever. They cast out the spirit of fever. My fever was around 103 or something like that. I don't know. And they said, let's go to the hospital. I said, no, I'm not going to the hospital. The Lord said he'd heal me. And my wife being a nurse was persistent, so I said, okay, I'll go to a clinic. <laughs> So on the way to the clinic, they, brought, they carried me to the car. They had to dress me. I couldn't even dress myself. They carried me to the car, put me in the car, drove me to the clinic, brought me in, sat there, brought me in the doctor's office. They put a thermometer in my mouth. 
The nurse left. The doctor comes back, pulls the thermometer out. I was totally healed. I mean, we went out and ate garlic, home fries, eggs, everything, man. I was totally healed. You know, the word says, many of the afflictions are the righteous, but God delivers them out of all of them. So no matter what, listen, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know how it came or whatever. Maybe the, the Lord saw something, obviously, that I might have shaken somebody's hand that had the flu. And he said, you're going to be afflicted. Does everybody get it? How many of you know flu is poison? Amen. Amen. Sickness, all disease is poison, man. And it comes from a curse. So it doesn't mean that you're not going to go through stuff. It would be nice, but welcome to the earth. You're going to go through stuff. Your trials and tribulations are to train you. And they're also to give an opportunity for God to move. How are you going to know what he can do for you unless you go through stuff? People don't, look at everybody's, everyone say, I'm building a testimony. <laughs> it's not done yet, you know. You're building the testimony. And God's the one that's going to build the testimony. But our stupidity is going to open the door for more demonic influence, which our testimony is going to get bigger. <laughs> I'd rather learn from somebody else's mistakes, amen? I've had enough of my own. <laughs> the poison is sin. It must be absorbed into this hole to start the course of doubt, unbelief, rebellion, fear, bitterness, lust, lawlessness. And what it does is it nullifies, everyone say nullifies, nullifies. the fruits of righteousness. You cannot produce fruits of righteousness when you are fully poisoned. And Deuteronomy 32. Thirty-two, thirty-two. <coughs> Is everybody there? Let's read these two verses, 32 and 33. It says, For their vine is the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, and their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of serpents. Say it again. Their wine is the poison of serpents <coughs> and the cruel venom of cobras. <coughs> so, you know, there's many people who think, well, I can drink, you know, and still, uh, let me tell you. It depends how, want, how close you want to get to God. For me, I can never drink, smoke. I can't do any, I will not touch anything unclean. I have enough trouble with everything else and open the door to anything else. Amen? Wine's poison of serpents and cruel venom of cobras. Hmm. And be believers think it's okay to drink. No, it's called an accursed item. Does everybody understand that? Everyone say accursed item. And Hosea chapter 7, and you don't have to go there. You read it. It says, accursed items, when there's accursed items in your home or you wear them, you cannot defeat your enemy. Why? Because this accursed item has been poisoned. It's been what? Poisoned. Buddhas are an accursed item. Skulls are an accursed item. There are things that are accursed items. Marijuana logos, drug logos, all kinds of things are accursed items. And these things carry a spirit and they carry a poison. And the word says you will not be able to overcome your enemy. Amen? Why? Because you're being bit. That poisoning, how many of you know poison will weaken you? Amen. Weakens you. Go to Matthew 3. You know, you may know some people right now that you can think of, man, that person's poisoned. 
They're poisoned. Poisoned with unbelief. Poisoned with doubt. Poisoned with fear. Poisoned. Matthew 3 and verse 4. Now this is about John the Baptist and John, now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. It was really not flying locusts. Hello? He did not eat flying locusts. <laughs> locusts was the name of a nut. So that's where you got nut and honey. That's where that cereal came from. It's actually produced by John the Baptist. You know, I mean, it might have caused him to dress a little funny, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> but anyways, in verse 5, Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Broad of what? Vipers, in other words, carriers of poison. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For as I say to you that God is able to raise up the children of Abraham from these stones. So what was John about? He called them broad of vipers. Why? Because they were carriers of poison. Amen? In 1 John chapter 1. First John chapter one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, in, today you can name your poison. <laughs> First John chapter one and verse five. Let's speak it together. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, does what? Cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, in other words, if we expose our enemy, the carrier of poison, and our acts of associating with it, if we expose them, we confess them, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, that cleansing there is cleansing from poison. Even leopards were poisoned. They were being cleansed. Jesus walked by them. They said, and he asked them, do you want to be cleansed? He said, yes. So this poisoning of these serpents and things that are contaminated in the arena of accursed items, they carry a poison, and they will poison me and you. Is everybody all right? Praise God. Verse 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus' Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us from all. Again, the antidote, because when you repent of your sins, is the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. James chapter 3. <clears throat> James chapter 3 and verse 7. James chapter 3. Let's speak it together. Ah, uh, we'll start at verse 6. Let's speak it. And a tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. 
the tongue is so among our, set among our members that it defiles the whole body, sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by what? By hell. For everything, every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. So only one that can tame your tongue is the Holy Spirit. So when you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, your tongue is loose as a goose. And it spits out serpents, I mean poisonous garbage. It brings doubt, it brings fear, it brings unbelief, it brings discouragement, it brings a curse, and every curse is carried, followed up by a spirit that's a carrier of poison. In verse 9, with it we what? Bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of our same mouth proceed blessing and curses. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a, tr can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear fruit? Figs. Thus no spring yields both salt and water. <laughs> Look at this next thing. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom is not descend from where? Above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. So I want you to understand that this poison will poison us to turn in an area of demonic wisdom. People go to college and get poisoned. People don't even realize it. They go to college and get poisoned by what? Education. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with education. But there's a place and time where the, some of the education ain't of God. Amen? Especially some of the things they're teaching in our schools today. It's just not of God. I've seen many people fall going back to school when God has told them not to. Listen, you don't need to go to school to get an education you need to get in the Holy Spirit and get an education. And then as you're led by the Spirit of God, He'll lead you what you're supposed to do. But see, the world promotes, get an education. Why? So they can give you poisoned. Does everybody understand this? There's an education that's from above. There's a wisdom that's from above. And there's a wisdom that's from beneath. And unless you're filled with the Spirit of God, the wisdom from beneath is going to overtake you. Why? Because what begins to happen is you'll want to be like someone from the world. That's what your identity comes from then. Instead of your identity coming from the Lord. You're to be, want to be like Him. If you don't want to be like Him, there's something wrong with you. You've been poisoned. And you haven't found your own identity yet then. You, you're carrying multiple, that's what, dual personality. Amen? Amen. Double-mindedness. All of these things, dual personality, double-mindedness, is all dual personalities. People are still looking for who they are, trying to find out who they are. They, look, at people go play sports and practice to be like a sports player. They spend many times, many hours practicing. There's nothing wrong with wanting to play sports. I love sports. But they're not my heroes. See, when that becomes your hero, it becomes an idol. Anything that's between you and God becomes an idol. And it will contaminate you, it will poison you, and you'll begin to lose your identity or never even fulfill it. Remember, Adam and Eve were moved from the garden, deceived by the serpent, because they never fulfilled their full identity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? So look at your tongue carries life and death. Your tongue carries what? Life and death. With it, you'll speak blessing or you'll speak curses. You either speak life into you or death into you. Because what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. Oh, yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 2.
There's accursed items that carry poison. But I want you to know the most contaminated poison is your old man. Your old man is the carrier of all the poison. That old man. 2 Timothy chapter 2. It's called your flesh now. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 2, chapter 21, verse 21, I'm sorry. 2 Timothy 2, 21. Let's speak it. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter. Cleanses himself from what? Po from the latter. What is that? Poison. Amen? presence of evil, sin. He will be a vessel for what? Honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Now he warns us the things that will poison us. Flee also youthful what? Lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, and love. Peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. So you got to be careful because bad associations will bring impartations. Listen, People are still hanging around with people because they're their old friends. While they're still drinking and partying and doing all kinds of other stuff, fornicating and all of these things, you can't hang with them no more. Your friends are now your enemies until they're unplugged from the world and plugged into the kingdom. Why? Because they carry demonic forces in them. And by hanging around with them, you will be bit by them. And they're not going to bite you, but what's in them will bite you, and they will poison you. That's why the word says, bad company corrupts what? Good habits. Bad, come on, say it with me. Bad company corrupts good habits. Yeah. Avoid foolish, verse 23, and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. Why? Strife is a poison. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God will perhaps grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. So God's going to grant them repentance. And that they may come to their what? Senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Why? How did this start out? Poisoned. They got poisoned. It was real simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it starts with repentance. That's a confession of sin. It's exposing of your evil deeds. 2 Corinthians 6. Verse 14. What does it say? 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14. Do not be what? unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. If they do what? If they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is what? Unclean. Unclean. Anything unclean, is it poisoned? Yes. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Continue on. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us what? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfect in holiness in the fear of God. Matthew 12. <clears throat> So associations will bring impartations. Don't touch anything unclean. Don't agree with what's unclean. Why? Because it's poison to me and you. I, sometimes we, we neglect the arena of realizing that something is poisonous to me and you. But if it had a skull and crossbone on it, you would know, oh, yeah, that's poison. Don't, don't touch that. Don't drink that. Amen. Well, we need to put skulls and crossbones on our, by, uh, and our imagination on things that are poisonous to me and you. Like lying, cheating, sin, adultery, fornication, rebellion. All of these things, anything that is against God is poisonous. 
Amen. Somebody get it? If it's not pleasing to God, it's poisonous. That's why in the Old Testament it tells us many things. Don't cut yourself. Don't tattoo yourself. Why? Because it's a poison to you. Amen? Amen? Well, when we've done it and we found out later, what do we do? We repent. Amen? And cleanse ourselves. It's amazing to me how many Christians are out there tattooers. Bringing a curse on them. So how many Christians out there are bartenders? And what are they doing? They're bringing poison to people. And even the word says, woe to them who make strong drink. Woe to them. And again, this is where God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they do not have spiritual understanding. Because they're still one foot in the world, the other foot in the spirit. And remember, you can't serve two gods. Matthew 12. <clears throat> Is everybody there? In verse 43. Matthew 12, verse 43. It says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. What's an unclean spirit? What's he carrying? Poison. Then he says, I will return to my house which I came from. He's talking about a body. And when he comes, he finds it empty and swept and put in order, but it's not filled, is it? Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall be also this wicked generation, an unclean spirit, as a carrier of poison. Demons are carriers of poisons. There are items called accursed items that are poison. We need to begin to look at these things as poison to me and you. Maybe we won't compromise them. Maybe we won't touch them. Maybe we won't justify. Because the word says, even if you agree with these spirits, if you agree with the things that God dis disagrees with, you'll be judged the same way. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Go to Matthew 10. That's why in the beginning he said, Al, those who follow me. Those who follow me. Those who follow me. Those who follow me will cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll pick up serpents. They'll drink things that are deadly and by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Matthew 10 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over what? Unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. So has he given that to me and you? Yes. Amen. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. We have power over all unclean spirits, all carriers of poison, spiritual poison. You know, Again, if we don't cleanse ourselves from these things, that's why it's important to disconnect ourselves from the world every morning so that we can reconnect to God. You can't be connected to God unless you're disconnected. That's a process that's done every single day. You get disconnected so you can get connected. That's why many people don't even put on the full armor of God. Many people don't even pray warfare in the morning. They don't take authority and bind loose. They don't put the powers of darkness in their place. And they wonder why they're not changing. Or they're still having bad habits. They're still doing the same things. Listen, the power of the Holy Spirit. He is your life. He is your connection to all life. He's your connection to eternity. Jesus paid a great price for me and you to have the Holy Spirit. And many people ignore it. Many people don't preach it. People still walking around stinky religion. Even Jesus told the Pharisees and Sadducees, he said something powerful to them. He said, you search the scriptures thinking you have eternal life. But you won't come to me to get it. Why? Because he's looking for relationship. 
the disciples did not have a Bible. People are more in tune with this than they are with him. Does everybody get it? Oh, that's where the word says the letter kills and the spirit brings what? Life. What would you do if your Bible was taken away? Would you still know him? Would you seek him? <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 2. And we'll close here. This is not a Bible study. This is a training session. Amen. This is a training manual. <clears throat> Proverbs 2. Again, the Lord says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. One of the areas of that is understanding. See, knowledge does not become truth until it's understood. Amen? Oh, people have a lot of knowledge but don't understand it. Then it's not truth. There's people that can memorize the Bible and the page numbers but are still going to hell because they're not practicing the truth. Why? Because when you practice the truth, there's a fruit of righteousness. Good people don't go home. Righteous people go home. I'm a good person. What's your fruits? Well, they're good. No, they must be righteous. That means right standing with God, distinguishable. There's a difference. This is where the enemy deceives many. Remember, his greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. He deceives many thinking that because they're a good person. That many people don't need a Savior. Some people only look at Jesus as Savior, not Lord. When he becomes the Lord over your life, he becomes your God. If he's just Savior, it's a one-time moment. But God wants to get you to a place where he becomes Father. He becomes Dad. That's relationship. In Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1, would you read it? My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to what? Understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good thing. Look at You cannot see past what you cannot understand. I'm going to say that again. You cannot see past what you can't understand. That's why the Holy Spirit is what brings you understanding so you can see past the physical into the spiritual. But there must be a willing desire. There must be a willing heart. You must be willing to do whatever it takes. You must be willing to maintain a thirst and hunger. You must be willing to praise and worship. You must be willing to deny yourself. If you're not willing, God won't force you. But he offers it to everyone. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, we ask that you expose our poisons and every associated spirit with them to each and every one as we prepare our hearts for communion this morning. We repent for any area of association, touch, agree, whether by ignorance, neglect, forgetfulness, or by willingness. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord, of every area that we have allowed poisoning to our bodies. And we ask that you'll wash us with the blood of the Lamb and heal us with the stripes of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.